Hi guys, Virtus Education here with the 31st episode of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series. And in this episode, I'm going to be introducing you to Matinee, somewhat expanding on what we went over in the previous video in the form of Kismet. So having said that, we did some cool Kismet scripts inside of uh, UDK in the past video. However, we're also going to be touching up on something else now in the form of Matinee, which is UDK's tool for keyframing the properties of actor actors in your scene over time, including their position it can also be used for offering cinematic sequences and so on and so forth so let's just give you a quick in uh, overview of what this can do so matinee is a really powerful tool and it has a whole bunch of different things that it can do so when i said actors in my description there i don't necessarily just mean static mesh actors i don't just mean sound there's tons and tons of things it can manipulate for example we can create a particle system um, keyframes, we can create sound keyframes, we can create uh, camera tracks and so on and so forth. So what I've done here is I've created a quick preview of some of the stuff that you can do. Now keep in mind this is just a tiny little taster of some of the stuff we can do. So the first of which is a nice lovely cinematic mixed with some particle systems, some sound, and that's all keyframe to be synced together and it will work really well. In addition, this is also triggered and uh, played using the Kismet se sequence. So if I quickly walk ahead of me just to my trigger, you'll see it swaps to the cinematic, and you could see there was that nice, lovely little um, uh, cinematic camera track going on there. We also had some sound, and we also had the particle system, and that was all in sync, which was pretty great. In addition to that, I've also created a nice, lovely interactive door. So instead of just the usual doorway you'd walk through it there's no movement if I go ahead and walk towards this now it will actually open up by itself automatically call uh, which is being caused by a trigger inside of my scene and if I walk away it will indeed uh, shut on me which is pretty cool let's give it a few seconds and you'll see that happen there we go. So that's just a quick taste of some of the things we can do in Matinee. Now just keep in mind there is plenty of stuff we can actually do in Matinee. It's not just some of the stuff I showed you. So we can do stuff ranging from uh, player animations, you know, static, uh, skeletal mesh actors, creating them and making them move around. We can do camera tracks, cinematics. We can do tons and tons of stuff. And today's episode is only going to be a little taster of some of that. Now I also advise that you go and check out um, UDN uh, for a full list of some of the stuff you can do in it. So hopefully now you have a good understanding of what Matinee can do. I'm now going to show you that in detail um, with some of the Matinee stuff that I've created already. So this Matinee sequence here belongs to the cinematic with the particle systems and so on. So I'm going to open this up so we can have a closer look. So the most important and first thing you can see here is the lovely little keyframe system that we have. So you can see here we've got our little keyframes and we've also got stuff in between and then we've also got names and we've got some groups and it's really well organized and should give you a little bit of a good understanding of some of the stuff we can do in here. So I'm going to quickly press play on this here and you can actually watch what it does. I'm just going to go to the beginning and I'm going to go ahead and press play and you can see it flies over plays the particle system and then the sound and you can see the different little layers here that you have and you can see that all happening at once and we're actually going to be doing some of this stuff ourselves so if I just see if it, yeah okay apologize for that little stutter there but if you just quickly watch that you could see it happen exactly when it hit these little key points here and it will end including the sound at the end of the key point which is cool so Having said that, you should have a good understanding of how the keyframe system works. Keep in mind, I'm not necessarily going to be creating anything in this episode. However, over the next few episodes, I will be creating stuff. That stuff will be particle systems, we'll be doing some animation with doors, uh, characters. We're also going to be doing some uh, sound stuff. And most importantly, the cinematic stuff, if I didn't mention that already, which is cool. So I'm going to be showing you how to make little quick cinematics like this or massive really long level fly throughs which is pretty cool and using camera actors, director groups and so on. So let's go over the Unreal Matinee interface so you can be familiar with it ready for the upcoming videos. So I'm just going to quickly pull this out here so you can see the whole thing. So let's start off by uh, going over the most important elements. At the very top you have your little menu bar, you usually have that 
in most applications, you know, just import, export, uh, things like that. You don't really need to touch that. Next, you have your toolbar. You've got loads and loads of things up here which allow you to uh, play with your things. So, for example, up here in the top left-hand corner, I can play it, I can loop it, I can stop it, I can go back and play it in reverse, uh, which I'll show you now. If I press stop, it will go back to the beginning. If I press play, it will begin to play. If I press reverse, it will start going backwards. We got some things for scaling here. We've got some other stuff which I advise that you play around with and test out. Next up, you have your curve editor, which is pretty cool. Uh, essentially, the curve editor allows you to graphically visualize and edit the animation curves used by tracks in the matinee sequence, which is pretty cool. We won't be touching this too much, but you will get to a point where you'll be using the curve editor. But uh, for now, we're just going to be using the timeline panel, which we have just underneath it. And that's pretty self-explanatory, really. This is essentially just our team, uh, our time frame. And on here, we can um, place our different objects and events uh, based on uh, time. So you can see here, we've got our little times, uh, time graph at the bottom. And you can see that all of these are positioned in time. So roughly, for example, here, it's going to start playing at 2 seconds. And then the explosion particle system will finish at like three point uh three or something, and then the sound will finish at four seconds. You know we can do all of that, and we can add in new keyframes and so on and so forth, which we will be doing in addition to uh stuff in the time frame panel here, we also have our group tabs, so we can actually quick uh quickly go to certain parts of our matinee sequence, so for example, if I only wanted to see cameras, I can quickly press cameras and we'll see that or I can skip ahead and go to particles, lights, skeletal meshes, sounds and so on. Obviously these are only going to be applicable to what you actually have in your sequence. So we also have our, our group and task uh, and track lists. So over here you can actually see which sort of groups that certain events belong to. So over here I've got my sound group, I've also got my particle group, I've got my camera group here with the movements and the FOV changes. This is really makes it really nice and organized which is great so you can um, see for example if something's up there it's going to be the movement of the camera and you can see that so if I quickly click the first keyframe here it's going to be at the very beginning and if I se select the second one it's going to be moved slightly and so on and so forth and you can see here that there's a brief gra gap here and then it plays the stuff so yeah that's kind of how it works uh, you know we've got our nice lovely uh, events and then we got our groups that uh, maintain them so I apologize if any of that was all jumbled up and stuff and the last part which I forgot to go over is indeed our, pa uh, our properties panel so if, for example if we go ahead and select a certain group or a certain item here we can actually play around with the properties for that which is cool so for example if I go ahead and click on camera pan and then the movement group I can play around with some of the properties here for example I can disable movement, I can uh, look at the group name, uh, I don't know why you want to do that, but for example the sound, I can make it play in reverse, I can I can make it continue to play the sound after matinee is finished, and so on and so forth. Now matinee has tons and tons of stuff that you can play around with. I I greatly advise that you play around with all the different properties, all of the different things that you can create. Actually, having said that, I haven't actually shown you all of the different things you create. So, make sure you do. So, if you go ahead and right-click here, you can actually create your new groups. Now, you may only see a few groups here. Camera groups, particle groups, skeletal mesh groups, lighting groups, AI groups, and just new folders. But inside of those, you can create more and more things. For example, in the camera group here, if I go ahead and right-click that, I can then create a whole bunch of different tracks. Now, just like VFX stuff, you can actually create more tracks, so it's not you're not just limited to necessarily just movement. For example, in this particle track here, in this particle group, sorry, I've got my particle track, and then I added an additional sound track to make uh, some sound play and sync it up to what we have here, which is pretty cool. So play around with some of these, just have a quick listen, uh, just have a quick read through what some of these are. Most of them are self-explanatory. For example, new ball property, we can change the ball from true to false. Uh, for example, something like a soundtrack, we can play sound. Uh, something like a movement track, we can move uh, 
interpactors around, so, for example, I can move, uh, things like a cube, so if I quickly fly around, uh, over to my cube inside of a level that I have, you will see that it's essentially just an inter interp actor, interp actor with a matinee sequence which is located over here. So if I just quickly close that, and you know, we got this lovely movement track. If I go ahead and press play, you can see it's spinning there, and I've actually got it set up in Kismet to keep looping it and looping it and looping it, and it looks pretty cool. Now, keep in mind, you can actually animate stuff inside a UDK, like physical objects, just like I did here. In addition, you can also uh, export animations out of uh, some kind of animation package, for example, Maya, Blender, whatever, and then bring it into here and then play it and put it into a nice, lovely track. So, thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out many of the things you have in Matinee and check out the Matinee um, UDM page, and I will see you in the next video in which we continue on from our introduction to Matinee and go over actually creating some of these lovely, lovely Matinee sequences.